and welcome to the new day of law. Keyshawn, Jay Will, and Zubin. It's the first time I saw it. not only anger, but despair and no answers. I don't know if there is a way to change. The so cold's too tight. Tony, we don't, we can't afford to have the long play. The long play can see 8 to 12 to 15 to 20 more black men or women shot and killed. You, what you're hearing, and I said this yesterday, is the frustration, the anger, the desperation. They think that they're entertaining everybody through all this, and they feel like pawns through this whole thing. The long-term play doesn't work anymore. We, you've got to play for now. now. Three, one into the two, 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 one into Thursday morning. It's a phrase uttered more in 2020 than in the previous 20 years combined. It's yet another unprecedented day in the world of sports. The sun is coming up in New York City with Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahenti. We are on ESPN Radio, the app ESPN News. Gentlemen, there was once a point where we thought that the coronavirus was the only thing that could shut down the NBA bubble. Maybe we were wrong, maybe we were naive, maybe we were wearing blinders, or maybe we were simply ignoring the reality of what was going on in the world. No matter what, the NBA shut down their games yesterday, as you know. Today's triple header on ESPN is in serious peril. There will be a board of governors meeting. Key, I want to start with you. When we left here at 10 a.m. Eastern time yesterday, both you and Jay had an inkling that something was going to happen, and something certainly did happen. The Bucks started it. The other teams ended it, and we're not sure. Maybe. The NBA is crowned a champion for 73 straight years. This is the 74th year of the league, and this might be the first time there's a blank next to the Larry O'Brien trophy. That, that is true. When we were here yesterday, I wasn't even focused in on the Bucks. I was focused in on Toronto because that was the conversation that was being had. Right. Uh, just never dawned on me that the Bucks were going to be the first to put their foot down. And then once I got to NFL Live and we got ready to start our show there, prior to that, you could there was some grumblings about something could be coming down, the Bucks are taking the court, and then at the end it was like, you know what? They're going to they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be first. It makes all the sense in the world because it's in their backyard. They have players on their team that have had issues with the police in that state. Mm-hmm. It makes all the sense in the world. And then all of a sudden, bam, it comes down. And then it becomes a trickle-down effect, which it should. And as I said yesterday, Jay, if Toronto was going to be the first team that everybody else was going to follow, it just so happened to be the Bucks. I'm just tired of being tired. And today is a monumental day, not only for our show, not only for the NBA, but I also think for our country. It is a day key that we need to have resolved today. There is a lot of stuff happening in the world right now. We have racism. We have a pandemic. We have Hurricane Laura. We have CDC guidelines that are being changed. It seems like it is a tornado of chaos, but I will not let the weight of the world hold me down from being animated and being an instrument of precision when it comes to creating change. We have to continue to use our voice and be more energized and animated than ever before and be rejuvenated. And for this conversation that we're having today, I think it's so important. And as it relates to the NBA, I do not think we will have an end of the season. I do not. It's going to be really hard for after the tone that was set yesterday, that I am sure is gonna be followed today to try to stoke change and create change from a legislation perspective, which we know does not happen overnight, to then all of a sudden say, we're just gonna come back and play basketball. Now look, people are gonna try to use this against basketball players, ultimately by saying, well, you have the China situation and I didn't see people stand up against China and I said, Well, I'm not focused on China right now. I'm focused on our country, and that's what our NBA players are doing right now. And I think you're going to see NFL players follow suit and align together. And I will say this. Yesterday, I was a little bit unsure about whether boycotting was the right answer. I can firmly sit here today on our show and say, I stand with my NBA brothers. I stand with people across this country on sometimes extreme situations call for extreme measures. And we have to push people to create that change as swiftly as possible because enough is enough. 
I want to mention this because I'm sitting here with two tremendously talented African-American athletes. Key, I want to just get your perspective on this because when something like this happens that's truly unprecedented, what you really need is some historical perspective. I want you to listen to this. There has never been a professional sports team prior to yesterday. There had never been a professional sports team ever that had refused to play a game due to social injustice. We're talking the 1960s, we're talking Bill Russell. There was one caveat I want to bring forth because if the ultimate champion is listening this morning, I know he was active on Twitter last night. The 1961 Celtics, which Russell was a part of, they did skip an exhibition game in Lexington, Kentucky because they were not served food at a particular restaurant due to segregation, but seven guys did play later that night. That was an exhibition game, but in the history of professional team sports, in this country, no team had ever said we're not playing due to social injustice, racism, anything until yesterday. A watershed moment, an inflection moment in the history of sports in America. Clearly, times have changed, right? We're not I mean, about it, that. It's, it's clear, but the players are standing up for what's right. I mean, like Jay was saying, you get tired of being tired. Like, it's, it's enough. Like, you can't continue to think that we're supposed to entertain you playing basketball, forget about people being gunned down in the streets. No, and, and it's just, it makes zero sense. And you put that pressure on these owners to put that pressure on their buddies that they write in these checks for in the political circle to pass laws. Now we gonna put that pressure on you to make a decision on going to them and saying, yo, this is affecting me and my family and how we feel about people that work for us. So it's, it's going to work itself out, but it's not going to work itself out overnight. And we must all understand that. Well, that's where it comes down to, Key, you know, the next step in the evolution of this process, that if the decision is for LeBron James and company to boycott today's games, which I think it's going to be, if they continue to follow suit, you can't just use this as a negotiation ploy. Like you have to be willing and ready to walk and, away and, and from see, it. And I don't. And I don't think. And we've been talking about it. I don't think Jay that they are just using it as a negotiation ploy. I don't think at all. They've got to get all the facts from Michelle okay. yes. at the NBA uh, PA. They got. They got to have everything in front of them so they have a clear understanding of the plus and minuses in these situations. And I, I strongly believe that the players, if given all the information which they will, they'll make the decision that it's a wrap. We we want this done today. We can't wait for y'all, you know, six years from now, oh, we're gonna, we gonna make promise, we're gonna make good, because we've been living on that for how many years now? <laughs> Too long. Too long. And what the answer is, once you assess that information, who know, who knows how long that takes? Right? Well, it's, like, going, it, it's going to take a minute it, to assess it, all the information, the pros and the cons, like you alluded to. But once you, I, I, I do really feel this way. What the players have right now, Key, is not leverage over the NBA. They have the ears of the entire planet. Yes. So what comes out of their mouths next is extremely imperative. It sets the tone. So I said before, being that instrument of precision, you have to outline what it is you want from a local, a state and a federal level and then give targets to owners to then deploy assets and their resources to get those things done and i and i think that they will have that in place and be able to do it it's just whether or not the owners are willing to go and do that not just in basketball mm. okay basketball pretty much for the most part have always kind of done the, tried to do the right things Football is...